A crypto entrepreneur is currently facing a potential prosecution in Israel related to $290 million scam. But how grievous are the charges? By the way, Tornado Cash co-founder Roman Semyonov has been placed on OFAC's sanctioned persons list and Roman Storm was arrested as the United States continued its crackdown on the crypto mixer. Stay till the end of the video. As I will be giving valuable insights regarding Bitcoin Ordinal's NFT volume as it plunges 98%, and also more interesting news concerning friend. Tech. Sit back and enjoy. Hello and welcome to our channel, where we talk about the latest updates from the world of cryptocurrencies in general. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, we extend a special welcome to you. We invite you to hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, let's dive in. The Times of Israel reported on August 23 that the National Police Force had recommended to prosecutors that Hogig be prosecuted with fraud, theft, money laundering, and sex offenses. The police claimed that the Israeli citizen had raised $290 million from investors for cryptocurrency projects under false pretenses, according to the Times of Israel. The businessman had previously been seized by Israeli police in November 2021 for allegedly engaging in illegal operations, including cryptocurrency fraud, for which he was placed under house detention for about a month. The report followed a two-year investigation into Hogig's allegedly illegal activities, some of which involved cryptocurrency projects. In June, he traveled to Morocco and announced his involvement in Tomi, a blockchain project based on an alternative internet network. Hogig told Cointelegraph at the time that as a figure in the crypto space, he may have become a target to authorities. According to reports, 180 persons were reportedly interrogated as part of the police probe, and assets and money were seized abroad. According to a spokeswoman for Hogig, he expressed his satisfaction with the investigation's outcome and claimed that numerous media outlets covering the matter had done a great injustice to him. He has refuted each and every charge. Hogig allegedly spent $7 million of the allegedly unlawful monies to purchase the Beitar Jerusalem soccer team. In August 2022, he sold the group to businessman Barack Abramov. Furthermore, on August 23, Roman Semyonov, one of the co-founders of the Tornado Cash cryptocurrency, Mixer, was added to the Office of Foreign Assets Controls, OFAC, List of Specially Designated Nationals and Blocked Persons, SDN. The Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigation Division detained another county founder, Roman Storm, the same day in Washington state. In an August 23 indictment that was previously sealed, Semyonov and Storm are accused of conspiring to launder money, violate sanctions, and run an unauthorized money transmission business. The maximum term for each of the first two offenses is 20 years in jail. The maximum sentence for the money transmission offense is five years in prison. Semyonov has not been located. Alexei Pertsev, the third co-founder of Tornado Cash, was detained in the Netherlands in August 2022 on suspicion of money laundering. U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York Damian Williams said in a statement released by the Justice Department, DOJ. As alleged, while publicly claiming to offer a technically sophisticated privacy service, Storm and Semyonov in fact knew that they were helping hackers and fraudsters conceal the fruits of their crimes. The U.S. government's crackdown on Tornado Cash, which started last year, is being continued by the law enforcement measures. 44 addresses for USD coin and Ether were added to the SDN list by OFAC in August 2022, thereby barring Americans from using the service. The licensing of Tornado Cash by OFAC sparked outrage in the cryptocurrency world. Coinbase supported a lawsuit brought by six people who claimed the Treasury Department overstepped its bounds when it sanctioned the mixer. CoinCenter, a legal advocacy group, also filed a lawsuit. Representative Tom Emmer, a supporter of cryptocurrency, questioned the action in a letter to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Both the DOJ and OFAC specifically refer to Tornado Cash's role in laundering funds of the North Korean-linked hackers Lazarus Group, which is also on the SDN list. But Tornado Cash has been implicated in several other hacks as well. All told, the mixer has laundered over $1 billion in ill-gotten gains, according to DOJ allegations. Now to our main focus for the day. Please, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that notification bell to be the first person to get more updates about the latest happenings in the crypto space. Since its beta version introduction on August 11, Friend Tech, a new decentralized social networking platform, has quickly become one of the hottest new things in cryptocurrency 
gaining over 100,000 new subscribers and surpassing 24,000 Ether in trade volume. While many prominent members of the cryptocurrency community have commended the program for bringing thousands of individuals into the blockchain and encouraging participation from even non-crypto celebrities, such as gaming YouTuber FaZe Banks and the Russian protest group Pussy Riot, others have expressed concern that it may eventually run its course. NFT marketplace OpenSea is sunsetting its on-chain royalty enforcement tool, Operator Filter, which allows creators to blacklist NFT marketplaces that don't enforce royalties. The change is set to take effect on August 31st, according to an August 17th statement by OpenSea founder and CEO Devin Finzer. When it was first launched in November 2022, the operator filter function was referred to as a simple code snippet that could limit NFT sales to those marketplaces that imposed creator fees. Yuga Labs withdrew support for the NFT market as a result of OpenSea's announcement. Following the NFT marketplace's announcement, Yuga Labs declared it would begin reducing OpenSea support for all upgradable contracts and any new collections. Additionally, the Board Ape Yacht Club BAYC, investors' class action lawsuit against BAYC developers Yuga Labs recently listed Sotheby's as a defendant. The investors claim that Yuga Labs was able to deceptively promote the NFT collection with the aid of the auction house. On December 10, 2022, BAYC investors filed a class action lawsuit against over 40 defendants, including Yuga Labs and celebrities like Post Malone, Justin Bieber and Paris Hilton. The lawsuit alleged that Yuga Labs and the celebrities were able to artificially increase the prices of the NFTs through celebrity promotions. DAP Radar has pointed to an alarming plunge in Bitcoin Ordinal's NFT user activity, with trading volumes tanking around a whopping 98% since May. In an August 17 report, DAP Radar highlighted its data showing that total Ordinal's sales volume had decreased from peak levels of $452 million in May to roughly $3 million as of August 14. In line with that drop, the number of transactions also declined by around 97% to 20,571 in the same period. Well to wrap up for the day. NFT marketplace Orica, which debuted in November 2021, promoted itself as an ethical platform that benefited charity, artists, and collectors equally. The group was working on a number of well-known initiatives at the time, including supporting Ukraine and establishing a school in Uganda. But less than two years later, the marketplace's user interface has been deactivated, and the project's creators have vanished. All that's left are the project's charitable endeavors, which turned out to be sincere, and claims made by irate users that the developers pulled a ruse. Co-founder Daniel Zay breaks his one-year quiet in a new disclosure, not only disputing all accusations and saying that the project was hacked, but also asserting that the project is still in progress. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments section. Write us anything down here, we are very eager to read you. Always remember that you are an important part of our community. With that we come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe. This really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Also share this video to as many people as possible, let's get this news everywhere. If you are a true cryptocurrency fan, don't miss any of our content and don't forget to follow us on our new Instagram account at FactMakeMoney. See you in a future opportunity to talk about the latest news that concerns us all as a community. Thanks for watching.